Can you believe that God loves you? That's probably the most important part of all kind of religious things. And if you listen to the Gospel of Matthew, you are going to be overwhelmed with how God loves you. Hello, how are you? God bless you. Thank you very much for watching the program. You are going to be blessed because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you an insight into a wonderful, wonderful book. <laughs> it's, it's called The Bible. And, and I want to talk to you about the, the, the Gospel of Matthew, one of the, the really neat books. I, I've explained to you in past programs about Mark as probably being the first gospel that was written. And Mark, with a, in, a, in a great way of genius, laid out a way of explaining the life of Jesus that had never been done before with other autobiographies or, or other biography stories. But this was a, this was a format that, that Mark started, and then Matthew and Luke came on and used this. And a little later we have, with uh, certain variations, John comes in and gives his gospel. But I wanted to talk to you today about uh, an aspect of the Gospel of Matthew. Now, Matthew was written for Jews, and I tried to explain to you how he's bringing in so many of the Jewish references to Jesus in the, in the prophets and some of the, the other writings of the Bible. Uh, it's very important that we see this thing. But one of the aspects of, of, the, of the Gospel of Matthew is that it's written under five books, five separate, separate books that are conveying special messages that relate to the first five books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go into the first book, if I will, and it's a book that starts it starts around chapter, chapter 5 of the Gospel of Matthew. It's a fascinating bombardment of the teaching of Jesus that speaks to you and me, that makes the, the teaching of Jesus very different than maybe a philosopher who's from Greece or from Rome or, or from Africa. This is a teaching coming from God, giving us insights and saying, hey, you want to follow God's will in your life? You want to be really filled with peace and wholeness in your life? Well, here's what you should do. Well, uh, listen, if you will, as I give you some insights into this first book, this, this, uh, this Sermon on the Mount, if you will. And there are going to be f eight new laws that Jesus proposes. Eight, eight laws that are going to explain this is, this is what you do, not only if you want to be in line with God, but this is what you do if you want your life to be filled with joy and peace and fullness. That's what Jesus is about. Jesus has come to give us the direction of, of what the Father wants us to do, but we get the added blessing of that, of having all kinds of great things happening in our hearts with joy and peace and fullness of life. Now, we're going we're gonna to be talking about these, these eight, and you know them by the, by the word beatitudes. Well, the Greek word for beatitudes is, uh, I guess it means blessed, doesn't it? I mean, you're blessed. But when you get down and you kind of look at some of the definitions of the, of the word blessed, it can also mean happy. Yeah. And, and I, I'd, I'd love you to kind of think about the, the Beatitudes as expressions of happiness. Yeah. Let's go through them, if you will, and, and, um, 
And I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for something that's going to make me happy. I, <laughs> we, we want happiness in our life. And this is what God is coming in to say. Blessed, but happiness, this is what you can do. Number one, if you really want to be happy, if you want to be blessed in this life, be poor. Be poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. I oftentimes wonder what would happen if a big earthquake came to here to Southern California and, and I lost everything, all those pictures, all those, those things on my iPad that, that are so vital in my life today, what would happen if I lost things that are so important? And Jesus is coming to us and saying, if you really want to be happy, if you want to be blessed, you know, make sure that there's a sense of separation from the material things of this world. Stop, stop relying on the world of the hunger that comes from the commercials that we're getting. getting oh, if, if you have this, then you're going to be happy. You have this car, you have this soap, you have this, uh, this cream. Ah, then you're going to be happy. And, and, and Jesus is coming and saying, no, separate yourself with a real sense of division, with a real sense of freedom from the material things of this world, you know? Now, the second thing that he says is this. And now, this is a real zinger. Now, I want you to listen to this and let this sink in. He says, happy or blessed are they who mourn. Boo. That seems like a real contradiction in terms, doesn't it? Happy are they who mourn. When you mourn, you cry, you, your heart is broken, you're, 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 you're living with a heaviness. But you know what Jesus is saying? I want you, as a follower of mine, to risk loving other people with your head, your heart, your soul, your mind, with all your strength. I want you to love other people. And I want you to love other people so much that if they leave you or if they die, your aching heart is going to be so, so strong. Isn't that fascinating? God wants you and I to risk, to continually be willing to let go by loving other people so much that we risk the pain of the separation that might happen. I was, I was talking with a dear friend who lost her brother. And you could just tell by the expression in her face and in her eyes, the mourning was very deep. And, and, I, and I brought this to her. I said, there's something about mourning that is positive and is good. And what it is is God believes that when you mourn, you're expressing the fact that you love another with all of your heart. And God wants that. Challenge. Love other people. Don't be isolated. Don't be an island. Risk loving others, and you are going to find, this is what the Word says, you're going to find real happiness. You're going to be blessed. Well, now, the next, the next one is, is, is another, another difficult one, and, and it's blessed are the meek. I don't know about you, but when I think of meek, my initial thought is, it's... Uh, you know, somebody that's kind of mamsy-pamsy, you know, oh, he's meek and he's gonna, not going to stand up for what's right or he's not going to give his opinion because others might think about it. And so I'm always, always going to be very humble and, and, and very distant from anything of talent. But what I found was the word meekness means strength. Strength to be able to resist revenge, to, revis, to, to resist and even accept turning the other cheek. Oh, we live in a world in which revenge and violence is so much a, wor a reality of our world. And Jesus is coming and saying, resist that, become meek, not mamsy-pamsy, but strong enough 
to stand up for those that are wrong and not to be sucked in, if you will, to the, the vengeance and the evil that they want to convey. Don't allow that to happen. Remain meek, remain strong in the confidence of God's love and the strength of that to do what you can do. Be meek, not, not mamsy-pamsy, but strong in standing for the right. The next one is, blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. I don't know about you, but in my, my heart of hearts, in my gut, I can often tell what is really right, what it is right to do. And I need to be more sensitive to my conscience. Now, conscience is something that can be very good and very weak, but conscience is also something, a gift from God, that tells me I should do this or I shouldn't do that. Think about this, if you will. Think about this as the, the key to happiness. Not just running away from our conscience, but continually believing in it, letting the saving activity of God be the direction of my life, submitting to God's plan as moving in my own conscience. Well, please stay tuned. I want to move through the rest of these, these beatitudes, these happinesses, if you will, to find the real honor and joy and blessing of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. One of the most charming aspects of Jesus was that not only did he heal people, not only did he walk on water, but Matthew and Mark say that whenever he was talking to a large group of people, maybe thousands of people, he only told stories. I love that because thinking of Jesus as a master storyteller is so intriguing. And I've written a book about the parables of Jesus. The book is called 15 Faces of God. I go through 15 parables, uh, the exciting ones, and then I show how Jesus is saying in this magnificent love that he has for his Father, this is who my Father is. So as you listen, you're going to hear various, various faces of God searching humble, listening, celebrating, loving, forgiving, proud, and even optimistic. I want you to have this book. We're going to be giving you a special offer for $10. You're going to be able to have this book. This will be a great way for you to help our television ministry and also find a wonderful way of understanding how Jesus uses these magnificent stories as opening the door for us to know who God the Father is. So please, a $10 donation or $10 or more if you can, to allow yourself to be enriched and to also bless this ministry, this television ministry, which is continually needing your prayers but also needing your financial support. Please, make sure you get this book. The next blessed, the next key to happiness is people are, are called to be merciful. Because they're going to obtain mercy, Jesus says. If, you, if you're merciful, you'll, you'll obtain mercy. Mercy is a difficult word, isn't it? Because a lot of times, out of our insecurity, we want to make sure that people do what we're doing and when they, what, what we think they should be doing, and when they don't do it, we want to punish them. Boom. You know, clear as that. We want to be very legalistic about where we come. And yet there's another side to the truth. There's another side to justice. And that's the side of mercy. Pope Francis has dedicated an entire year to the word and challenge of mercy. We need to be merciful with other people. People that perhaps are 
going away from the plan that we think they should be doing, to be merciful, to be patient, and to be enough wiggle room, if you will, to allow them to be who they are. Another thing that I'd like you to say, and I'd like to think about, is this. That God's mercy, you know, this, this thing that we're thinking of, happens through you and me. If we, if we want God to be merciful, the mercy of God is going to happen through you and me. We are the instruments of God's mercy. And that's so very important for us to remember. But there's an, another aspect of this mercy that I want you to think about. Not only are we called to have beg God for mercy, and then we hope that people will respond. Not only are we called to be merciful to other people in our life when, when things are going around, you know, and not judging and condemning and boom, 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 but merciful, merciful. But there's another aspect of, of mercy, and that's being merciful to myself, to be merciful, to be willing to allow God to forgive me huh? and believe that he forgives me and letting go of the guilt, letting go of the bad memories that are so many times plaguing my mind, putting it away you know, and allowing God to forgive me. It's interesting that, that, the, that the Hebrew word in, in the Old Testament for mercy is a, is a word that, that is very the same as the womb, the womb of a mother. Isn't that fascinating that, that uh, mercy really means the tenderness of the womb of a mother that, that bears a child for nine months in her womb? The, the Greek word, uh, eleos, uh, it really means oil. And I love the thought of, of someone coming and rubbing my back <laughs> with an oil and pushing into all those knotted nerves and muscles and bringing about peace and mercy. That's what God's mercy is. And then, of course, the, the Spanish is misericordia, and, 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 and it has two meanings in there, misery, m misery, <laughs> misery, and then the heart. And, and it says in a wonderful way that when you have misericordia, you have a, an aching in your heart. You have a, a pain in your heart to want to care and, and to commiserate and to be part of the sufferings of others. Well, the next thing about having happiness and being blessed, and this is what Matthew is trying to convey to us through the teaching of Jesus is, blessed are the pure of heart. Wow. Whenever I think of purity, I think of the contrast of what goes on now with pornography and so much of the media, a sense of purity, a sense of respect for the body of a man, for the body, body of a woman. You know? And to be able to see sex as a, a creating, creating gift of life. You know? and, and as a celibate, even those who were not married, to be able to take your gift and to be filled with life. You know? And we're going to be able to see God, to respect and to, and to love others, to be pure. Ah. The next thing is this. I don't know about you, but I can become, become very, very discouraged as I watch the news and hear of all of the, the wars that are going on, all of the refugees who have been lifted out of their world, out of their homes, and out of their security, and are now, are now subject to new languages, new worlds, new foods. And in the midst of this, God calls you and me to be peacemakers. And, and, and there's even, there's even the, the, this connection of saying, happiness is mine. <laughs> Happiness is mine because I'm a peacemaker. I bring peace into a world of violence and vengeance and hate. I allow God to, to, be, 
to be the center of the world in which, which we live. Please, as you hear this, and I know that sometimes when we talk about the wars that are happening in other places, we don't know what to do, and we, we can all almost just listen and, and feel a heavy burden in our, in our inability to act, in our struggle with inactivity. Please know that small acts of love, small acts of peacemaking between husbands and wives, between parents and children, between the young and the old, between conservative and liberal, you know, all these, these warring things that are going on. Believe that when you act with peace, the smallest act leaves ripples that can change the lives of many, many people. You know? Well, the last happiness is, <laughs> and this is another, we, we talked about happy are those that mourn, but happy are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Gee, that sounds strange, doesn't it? Who, who wants to be happy at being persecuted? But when we are persecuted, we are standing up for what we know is right. And rather than just kind of letting things go on and on and on without standing up for that right, we are not satisfied. Our conscience isn't blessing us. And the call, call to you and me from Jesus is, stand up for those things that, are, that you know are right, even when people are going to laugh at you, and that can be a persecution, even when people want to hurt you, you know, uh, with, their, with their tongue, or even with their fist. Knowing in our heart of hearts that when we do stand for right, we are blessed, we are even happy <laughs> because we know that the power of good is more powerful than hate. Love is more powerful th than, than hate. Peace is more powerful than war. What do you think? I, 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 I'm asking you to kind of go back and, and think about these things as, as really keys to the understanding of of what Jesus is trying to teach us in this first book. Be poor in, in spirit. Be willing to mourn. Be meek. Hunger and thirst for what is right. Show mercy. Be pure in heart. Be a peacemaker and be so, so filled with the desire of being able to stand up for the truth that you say it, even when you might be rejected, misunderstood, laughed at, or persecuted in this serious way, hold on and let that joy come to you. Now, the next thing that Jesus says, and this is fascinating and a wonderful way to conclude this first book, he says to you and me, he says, you are the salt of the earth. You're the, you're the light that's sitting up on a mountain, allowing people that can't know what the direction of life is, you're a light that's shining into their, into their direction and their hope and their peace. We are salt that gives flavor to the world. We're light that gives direction. Isn't that marvelous to know? that we are, if we listen to those beatitudes, if we those calls to happiness, if we do that, God says we make a flavor change in the world. <laughs> we become the salt. We become the light of hope to the rest of the world. Go ahead, be a salt, be a light. One of the most charming aspects of Jesus was that he only told stories. I love that because thinking of Jesus as a master storyteller is so intriguing. And I've written a book about the parables of Jesus. The book is called 15 Faces of God. I go through 15 parables, uh, the exciting ones, 
And then I show how Jesus is saying in this magnificent love that he has for his Father, I want you to have this book. We're going to be giving you a special offer. For $10, you're going to be able to have this book. This will be a great way for you to help our television ministry, which is continually needing your prayers, but also needing your financial support. Please, make sure you get this book. Listen to the things and the challenges of the Beatitudes, the Happitudes, if you will. The way that God wants to say, if you really want to be happy, I, and I'm not just talking about a, a happiness which is, oh, you know, that's where we're laughing here and there, but a, but a happiness that centers with joy and peace and fulfillment in your heart. That's what Jesus wants to give you and is asking you, please, you know, just follow these rules. Think about the purity. Think about the letting go of this desire for physical things. Think about being merciful. And allow yourself to be strong as you stand up for what you know is right in the good things of life. With a real sense of gentleness, you know, not, not pushing things over, but the strength of saying what is right. Well. I'm, I'm asking you, please, if you would, would you join with me in prayer for the many people who have been calling in, the many people who have been writing emails and asking for prayers? They've been going to our webpage, and on the webpage, it's marvelous, there's a special place that you push, and you come up to a whole bunch of, of, of lights, of, of candles that you can ignite, that is going to go for 24 hours, as an expression of reminder for the special intentions that you have. Please, come to, come to the website. And also, don't forget this thing called iGod Today. iGod Today on your iPhone and on your Android. This is a way for you to be able to have a special message each day, each day from the readings of the Bible. Uh, a great thing. We've got a team of about 12 people that are really great that want to share with you. I'll even come in every once in a while and share something with you. But again, uh, as I ask you to pray, would you please, or, or for you to, to let us know what your prayers are, would you please pray for, for others? Here's some, someone that, that has sent things from the internet. Um, finding funds to repair the house. Um, Continued prayer for Jeff, a close friend of Noel. A prayer for success of the sale of a house of, of Kim and Aaron. Lord, never let us go. Be merciful to us. Fill us with all we need. And may Jesus' love for you always make you smile.